Yo guys, welcome to the video. This is Josh or Milky and in today's video, we're going to be talking about the league mechanic, Necropolis. Everything that I've learned so far whilst playing this league, I've been fully specced into it, trying to be as positive as I can about the mechanic, doing everything I can to get the most out of it. And I've had a good time for the most part. There are obviously things like, I mean, look at this screen. It looks so dumb. There's just, there's stuff everywhere. A lot of it's dumb. The UI is dumb. But I've been trying to look at it in a positive way, trying to use the crafts to make items. The items haven't been amazing so far. An example of an item that I crafted would be, uh, let's see, uh, this one. We've got a chest that I made. It has a haunted modifier. It has a lot of tier one rolls that I actually tried to craft. So I went heavy into the defense on this item, chaos, and then this haunted modifier to reduce the extra damage from crits. Just an example of something you can make. This was with a full graveyard. It's not perfect. It's okay. I did mess up a bit of the crafting. This was my first try. But if you're using a full graveyard and you know what's going on, you can definitely make things like this. So Grimrow has made a good video on the crafting so far. Uh, there is a lot for us to still learn about how the weightings work, how the scarce modifier works, how the upgrading the tier works. Uh, but that video is a great starting point if you want to learn how to craft items in the morgue. I'm not going to go into too much detail in this video because it's too, your head will explode. It's, it's, it gets a bit crazy. So what I've learned from doing the crafting so far is there's definitely corpses that are going to be uh, more in demand than others, naturally, right? There are things that people are going to need for basically every craft or more crafts than others. And the one that I want to start with, um, this one's a good example because it's got two things that we're going to talk about. So scarcer is the first thing. Scarcer makes a tag, sorry, less likely to roll. So if you have a thousand scarcer on an item, it will make it less likely to roll by a factor of 10. Now, there are many more tags on an item that you don't want than ones that you do. If we come on over to our first third party tool of the video, then we will see that there is attack, there's caster, there's mana, there's life, there's chaos, there's fire, there's cold, there's life. There's tons of what of tags, but there aren't that many that we want. For this, I want a fizz, I want a fizz gem amulet. I want an all skill gem amulet. I want some crit. And when all's said and done, we have maybe two tags that I want and nine that I don't. And that's going to be very apparent on a lot of items. A lot of items are going to be the same way where there's a few things that you want and a lot that you don't. So a lot of things you're going to need scarcer and a few things you're going to want to increase, making scarcer undoubtedly the bottleneck. And I can show you with an example that I've got here. You may think this guy's a psychopath. Why is he making notepad docs like this? Well, like I said, I'm trying, I'm just, I'm just giving it a chance. I'm trying to have a good time. It scratches a bit of an itch, you know, with the crafting, but you'll see this is a decent example because there are seven modifiers here that I need to block and only two that I need to raise. So you can see there that the scarce mod is going to be one that I need much more of. And it also has a lower roll. So it's harder to reach these like 1000 amounts, right? Each one of these, I need at least four crafts. And that's assuming I have high rolls on them. That's going to use up 28 slots in my graveyard just to block all these things. So scarce is definitely one that you want to pick up, especially if you get a high tier roll, pick those up, stick them in a dump tab, 30C, 40C. They've been selling all day for me like crazy. The next ones that you're going to want is the meta crafting. So as people get more um, accustomed, uh, I, this is something that I've started doing much more of with my crafts is I'm planning it out a bit more in advance and I'm trying to take advantage of these increased effects. Now you'll see these are very strategically placed. Obviously, there are there are rows here with more than five slots, and then there's columns with like eight. So I'm trying to strategically place these in order to get the most value out of them. And this is something that people are going to start doing as people get more accustomed to the crafting. And these ones are going to be used in basically every craft. So these increased effective corpses in both grave uh, row and grave column are ones that you're going to want to pick up because everyone who's crafting is going to need these because they're just a staple of your graveyard. There's no reason not to use these. They are strictly better than the alternatives if placed correctly. So definitely something you want to get. And the same goes for this chance to craft additional item, because why bother doing two graveyards when you can get two crafts out of one, right? So these chance to craft an additional item, definitely one you want to pick up and try to sell to other people. As again, I think this is going to be a staple of every craft once people find the perfect recipes and how to use the meta crafting. So that's what we're on with so far. Those are definitely some of the more important ones. The other ones 
uh, based on the um, availability in terms of what people are doing. Obviously, this will always change. So right now, a lot of people are making Ellie bows. So things that whatever recipe has been shared for that, I think Grimrose video went over a bit of a recipe. Those things are in high demand. So things like um, plus elemental or plus attack or, or scarce elemental or scarce attack. These are very important because these are actually part of a bigger pool. So you have Elemental, which you'll see is only 300%, and then you have Fire, Cold, and Lightning, which is actually 500%. So these roles that account for more of the mods than others have a lower um, kind of max on them. But it's still better because you can use these to block more mods whilst using less graveyard spaces. So look out for any of the attack, caster, or Elemental crafts, as these are also very good ones. The other examples of things that are very often used would be things like resistance. So, uh, and, and attributes. Ton of, tons of items have resistance and attributes, and very often you don't want them. So most crafts, whether it's a weapon, an armor, an amulet, whatever, they, they want to reduce the likelihood of getting resistance. So resistance is one that you're pretty much always going to need, and that I've been seeing today selling these uh, you know resistance bodies here even at 100 percent, i said the max is 300 right well i've been selling these 100 percent ones for 30c all day i think i've sold like seven so far today they just fly off and they're not even the top roll so everyone needs these for pretty much every craft if you're not going to block each resistance individually so i will have a bit of a list in the description but basically the scarces are going to be your bottleneck the meta crafting that increases the effect of modifiers in the column and row, and then things like resistance, mana, and attributes, things that are very ubiquitous, used in almost every item and craft, are going to be very popular too. The others are a bit more bespoke, and you might not need them as much. So there's the little list. I hope that helps slightly. <laughs> I know this is all a bit crazy. There's there's so much going on here. I think that, you know the lead mechanic needs a bit of love, but I'm doing my best. So let's talk about what I've actually been farming. So I've been loving uh, the actual maps so far. The devoted modifiers, to be honest, haven't been all that crazy, but the maps themselves I've actually thoroughly enjoyed. And the reason for that is because of my strategy that I've been doing. I've been doing a very fast Alk and Go strategy where I throw in a few scarabs that increase the pack size of the mobs, and then I'm just blasting altars. And we're going to talk a little bit about red altars because red altars are a bit crazy. And the reason for that is they have a really good scarab pool. Red has access to div. So instead of it just being you drop a div scarab on kill for a, an altar mob, you now just drop any div, not just rusted. So you can get the best ones. And I've dropped like 25 divines worth of div divination scarabs just from altars alone so far. And that's because of this node right up here. So you may have seen on Reddit, someone's been sharing posts about, you know, how much um, the weighting of the scarabs is based on veiled or veiled scarabs. And all that goes out the window when you introduce things like remarkable relics, which makes uh, the less common varieties more likely. This obviously heavily skews um, the results because the veiled scarabs aren't actually benefiting from this point. So the scarabs that we get in map, we're actually, I'm actually getting a lot more of the rarer ones than you would have thought based on those Reddit pictures, especially when you consider that you can also block scarabs. So I've blocked these six right here. And I've been getting a ton of good ones. I can show my stash briefly. As I say, I have been selling them, but some of them like, uh, you know, the, 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 time, the eternal conflicts one was slated to be incredibly rare. I've already dropped three of them. Uh, the, the divination ones I've sold, there was like 25 divines worth of of divination scarabs i've dropped like i think four of the nameless seer ones you definitely do drop them and this node at the top definitely helps it, uh, compared to the veiled scarabs so farming scarabs is very good and it's definitely in my opinion going to be a, a big part of the meta now the other thing that i've been doing is scaling the increased effect of modifiers and this is so that i can get even more pack size with my red altars so that i'm getting more scarabs more currency very good so let's, let's leave Red Altars alone. Let's come on down to the bottom, uh, to the Necropolis nodes. Now, these nodes increase the effect of modifiers on your mob. So this, this goes for the Devoted modifiers as well. You also get more chance of getting Devoted modifiers, sorry, with the uh, Devout Pursuit. Now, I have specced into the Fear of Light, and the main reason for this, if I'm being perfectly honest, is the All Flames are they just take up so much room in your inventory i was like screw it i'm gonna use sphere of the light i'm sick of getting these all flames that i'm not using i know some of them are good but i was just like i'm gonna use the fear of light and honestly it's been pretty good because sometimes you'll get a mob 
with two devoted modifiers, and I've had a much better time, honestly, since I spec'd Fear of Light. Now, it does make the map harder, because the mob can have two affixes, so it is very build dependent, you don't have to take this, it's just my personal preference. There is also the fact that this hides what mod you've rolled on the mod uh, mobs, you can't actually see it. Uh, normally down here there'd be like a, a showcase of this mob has this, this mob has this. When you have this ticked, you don't see anything. So you don't even know if you have a nameless seer. And he's already hard to find. So be careful if you spec Fear of Light. I like it. You might not uh, try it out. And then down here, these nodes essentially act as, you know, increased number of corpses. Because the more mobs you have with unresolved anguish, the more corpses are going to drop. So definitely... Um, good if you're trying to farm corpses to sell and then over here this is where you know there's a bit more thought to be had so we have condensed soul which increases the chance um, that the modifier tier rating crafting outcomes are going to be on the corpses personally i've tried some of these i don't like them and the reason for that is like i mentioned earlier the modifier that is difficult and bottlenecks you is the scarcity one and all this does is reduce the number of scarcity corpses that you get because you're getting more of this one instead. And honestly, this one is nice. You're going to want this for your crafts, but you're going to get more than enough by the time you end up getting all the crafts you need to reduce the likelihood of rolling certain mobs with the scarce modifier. So I've not actually specced into any of these. Maybe when the, if the market changes, if suddenly everyone was picking up corpses and crafting, maybe this would change because there would be an abundance of the scarce modifier. But right now I'm pretty much having to self farm and it's just not worth me going into these nodes. And then of course the all flame ones at the top, I can't take right now because I have the keystone ticked. Um, but if you didn't have the keystone ticked, definitely come in here and grab more all flames uh, because they do sell. There are some good ones that definitely sell. Outside of that, I've got shrines. In terms of compasses, what have I been using? Pretty much whatever I've got. I've been using Reliquary. I've been using Cartographers for my map sustain. Domination because I'm doing the shrine stuff on the Atlas Tree. The main ones that I do use is M Monstrous Lineage and Hordes. This gives influence monster packs 40% pack size, which does apply to obviously Red Altars. So more mobs to kill, more times to proc that on kill effect that Red Altars have. Um, and the same goes for Monstrous Lineage because a lot of the altar mobs are magic. Now, I've been yapping for 13 minutes. I've been awake for a very long time. I hope this was in some way helpful, insightful, uh, not cringe. I, I'm a dude making spreadsheets, looking at uh, third party tools to figure out how to craft a 5C item based on a notepad document I made at four in the morning whilst a hundred grown men watched me do it. All right. When we talk about things this way, we realize it's all a bit dumb. I hope you've had a great league start and I'll see you in the video tomorrow.